Well, it's a great pleasure to welcome BCX to the My Broadband Cloud Conference 2021. Dobel Malubane is the Managing Executive for Microsoft and Oracle Business Units at BCX. It's a great pleasure to have you with us. We're going to be talking about the cloud as an enabler for great customer experience and service. And we often hear about this customer experience and how important it is, especially in the time of COVID. So, Dobel, it's really good to see you. Um, and, and welcome to the conference. I think it's such an important subject that we're talking about. What are some of those issues that businesses face when trying to scale due to higher demand? Yeah, thank you so much, Aiki. Uh, good to be here. Um, looking forward to the conference. Well, Aiki, we are living in a time where, <clears throat> you know, consumer behavior is almost a bit, um, you know, unpredictable, right, for a lot of organizations. And what that typically means is once these consumers start showing some sort of demand, how do organizations scale at a computational level to be able to keep up with the demand that they're facing in the, in the market? And typically how customers or how companies, organizations used to do this, they would look at their peak uh, cycles to say at this time of the year, we know there's Black Friday, therefore there might be demand that we are seeing both in our bricks and mortar establishments, but also from an e-commerce or from an online purchasing point of view. However, it has now become a bit, you know, mad in terms of you can't predict uh, the cycles, you can't predict where these customers will be going as a point of uh, sale. And what that means is you cannot even predict from a spend point of view, when do you spend money on infrastructure to be able to, to keep up with that demand? So cloud is that one area where a lot of organizations are seeing growth opportunities to be able to service some of their customers. And cloud inherently comes with the ability to scale, both from mm -hmm. an elasticity point of view, you can scale up or scale down based on the demand that you're seeing in the market. You see, now that's so important, you know, there, there is so much unpredictability out there. And I think the cloud really comes in, as you said, that scalability, which is key. I mean, what benefits are there for those businesses that use cloud services to grow, for example? And I imagine that scale comes into this picture as well. Yeah, certainly, Aki. Well, what you've seen previously, or I would say in the recent past, is that a lot of companies and organizations are using the cloud as a playground to innovate, right? And by playground, I mean it, I mean it in the most literal sense. They get an opportunity to go and come up with new concepts, test them, iterate, come up with a go-to with a very small MVP that they can take to market very quickly. And then they've got a business that they can immediately launch, right? So from an innovation point of view, cloud is that medium or cloud is that one platform that allows them to do that. How they then come up with a way of taking that particular innovation or that new business that they have to market would obviously the merit would lie on the socioeconomic uh, stances that they find themselves in from a country or from a citizenry point of view. And then they would need to pivot a bit and, and start uh, reshaping some of their thinking to be able to fit the market that they're currently trying to sell to. But from a BCX point of view, I think we, we, we've done this a few times where we've helped some of our customers pivot very quickly, not only innovating at a technological level, but also help the, helping them innovate at a business model level. Yeah, absolutely. Pushing those boundaries. Uh, and it's important to have that flexibility in today's business environment. You know, I mean, we, when you look at the, the biggest differentiator that businesses should consider when providing services to customers, what would you say they are? You know, Aki, service, 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 right? We don't remember the price all the time of how much I bought a particular item. We usually remember how that, the, the purchase of that item made you feel. Uh, you remember how the environment felt from an ambiance point of view. That's why you've got these really high-end uh, premium brands make, investing quite a lot on the ambiance or in the environment where some of these sales happen. Now, if that is happening online where you don't have an opportunity as an organization to influence the actual environment in terms of ambiance, you know, you, you, you don't have an opportunity to play the right type of music or the, have the right type of scent that makes people feel very good in the store or have that face-to-face -face contact. What do you do to differentiate yourself from a service point of view? And that is where I would really want to anchor my discussion, right? To say service is honestly the core of 
a lot of uh, places where a lot of companies should be looking to differentiate themselves. If your service um, is, is good enough and if your service makes a person feel appreciated and feel like they've gotten value for, for money, they will most likely remember you. So you will be top of mind when it comes to the next purchase. Uh, you will see a lot of loyalty when it comes to brand equity and brand, brand loyalty. And in the long run, you can then start, you know, relying a bit more on your customer base to build a sustainable business with sustainable growth um, percentage from a percentile point of view over time. So service, 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 Aki. That's what yeah. I can say. Oh, if, man, if you, you this is music well. to my ears. And, and, you know, it's amazing how many companies still get it wrong today, you know, and it's like probably one of the most important things uh, to ensure your success. And you can see the organizations that don't take what you've just said seriously. And uh, you can see the ones that are taking it seriously. And it's what people say in the public eye, people use on social media. You know, there's no yeah. better endorsement than someone sharing a wonderful experience. And there's no yeah. worse uh, endorsement than somebody telling you how bad the service was. Now, which, which tools should these businesses use to ensure that they can provide great customer experience and service. Yeah, I think, you know, yesterday I saw um, one acquisition uh, that came up in the news, um, the acquisition of uh, MailChimp, for example, right? Yes. And, and, and I saw that and I thought to myself, this is actually, I didn't see it coming, one, from a thought leadership point of view, but two, uh, there are companies that have gone as far as valuing uh, the customer input, or let me say the customer feedback that um, that a lot of brands have been have been seeking. Now, from a tools point of view, Mailchimp is one of them. Um, within the Microsoft stack, for example, we've got something called Power BI. But typically, how Power BI is used, it's used to generate dashboards for op the operational side of business. So this would be an executive who has uh, five key metrics that they're tracking from a performance point of view, and they want to see how well their product and their business is doing. Why don't we take that, flip it on its head and say, this is a BI report on how we are doing as an organization in the eyes of the customer. So the customer would be looking at us and say, you as a organization X are taking the following five points when it comes to servicing me as a, as a, as a customer. What that means now is customer insights comes to the fore and you've got operational data that is there in the background, but it is now being seen in the same light, right? And by seeing in the same light, I'm saying we can use operational data to corroborate uh, data that comes from uh, customer insights and vice versa. If data says there was an up, uh, uptake or there was a peak time when it comes to selling a pr particular product within your store, what are customers saying about that product? If mm. you've sold 1,000 toothbrushes, Aki, and I'm saying this because of your beautiful smile, if, if you've sold... <laughs> 1,000 toothbrushes. What is the 1,000 customers who have bought those, uh, those toothbrushes saying about that particular product that they've bought? Uh, how far and how granular could you go on some of those insights? <clears throat> Are they talking about the brand that they've bought? Are they talking about the comfort? Are they talking about price, value, et cetera, et cetera? So the tools that we currently have at our disposal um, are quite competitive, they're quite comprehensive, but we need to find ways of using them differently in order for us to start seeing and gauging how customer experience uh, is looking like from an organization and from a customer point of view. This is music to my ears. I, I love I love what you've been saying. It just makes 100% uh, uh, sense. And I hope businesses are sitting up and taking notice because these tools are available and they do assist in growing your business and changing the customer experience. Now, when businesses then identify improvements, they can make for better customer experience, as you've spoken about. But how can yeah. the cloud play a role to implement these changes that you've been talking about? Yeah, and, and that is where I, I would say I have found my passion, right? Look at Africa as an economy, right? And you look at how vast and wide the continent is geographically. It is quite wide. Hmm. And you look at the terrain that we have. We've got, honestly, all the seasons you can think of, from a uh, forest, uh, jungles, all the way to having deserts and the Karoo and all of those things, right? So we've got a population that is quite spread, right? Well spread with that within the entire continent. You look at South Africa as a market, you've got a country that has um, about four or five different metros where people are uh, situated. 
but you've got the rest of the population that is spread throughout the entire country. Now, how do you reach those people who are spread throughout the entire country? Typically, what you would need to do would be to go to each um, a market or to each province and set up uh, an office. Once you set up an office, you buy infrastructure that would be hosted there so you can start servicing a particular segment of that market within that province, right? But what cloud allows you to do is for you to deploy once and deploy wide, right? And by once and wide, I literally mean you build something, you iterate it, you refine it, you perfect it, you put it on the cloud, you've got a quicker route to market, you can take it to your customers almost instantly across the entire country. The only uh, dependency that you would see would be the availability of broadband and the availability of telcos within this partnership. And I think we are in a unique position as a, as a business to be within an ecosystem that has a telco that we can leverage. And besides that, within a country that has a very mature infrastructure when it comes to telco and mobility. Wow, what a great conversation. And uh, uh, it's been fantastic chatting to you at this year's cloud conference, uh, Doble. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you for BCX for joining us and sharing those incredible insights because customer experience is really the key in growing your business. And every single conference you attend, everybody talks about customer experience customer experience customer experience getting that right is going to ultimately um, influence the success of your business Dobal malubani the managing executive for microsoft and oracle business units at bcx thank you for joining us at this year's my broadband cloud conference thank you so much for having me aki always a pleasure and see you soon take care thank you Bye.